Hello, my name is Marissa Louise. I am a colorist. I currently have out Grumble, uh, which is through Albatross Press, and uh, Hexwife Trade is coming out soon, and we're starting up Spell on Wheels again. So, uh, if you can guess from those titles, uh, I have a strong interest in horror and women's stories. So what we're going to be doing today here at beautiful San Diego Comic-Con is uh, I'll be talking about one of my interests, which is pigments, and uh, hag films, which is a super cool genre of 60s movies that people don't talk about anymore. I'm just going to do some color sketches of one of my favorite hag films, Sunset Boulevard. It is about an actress who aged out of movies because she was a silent film actress and she aged out of the films but also they became talkies so she wasn't able to make the transition and refused to acknowledge uh, the fact that she's aging. And so she hires a, a young man who is down on his luck to rewrite her script and turn it into something that's filmable. The problem is, is that it's completely unfilmable and he, it just, uh, it doesn't turn out well. <laughs> it's a really beautifully shot movie and it's a really cool movie. If you've never seen it, definitely do watch it. So this is the prototypical hag film because it has, um, it has a little bit of murder. It has a little bit of tension and horror and it's, about a, an aging woman. The key element of a hag film is that it needs to be about an older lady um, and her coping with her her powerlessness. It really needs to be like a top caliber actress. So she needs to be like super established, like have a very commanding presence um, and uh, high stakes and a sense of unreality and often uh, that is shown through at least one attempted murder. My top five hag films are Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, uh, Oh, Hush Hush Sweet Char Charlotte, Straight Jacket, uh, Sunset Boulevard, and The Night Walker. Okay, my first sketch is always like mega sloppy, um, just because I don't have a plan yet, uh, so. I promise it'll make sense eventually. <laughs> Some people are super, super great about having it well organized and having a bunch of key things that they do all the time so that they always know where they're at. But for me, because I like to experiment, I like to mess around, it's really important for me to not use the same shapes over and over and not use the same composition over and over because then I get very, very bored. One of the things about color is that uh, color only exists in relationship to other colors um, and color carries a lot of mood. So I think the mood I want to go for here is I want to do, uh, like I said, some unreality. So I'm going to use uh, some, this is gouache. It's a, a color I love, which is pale lime. Uh, so now I just need to decide if I want pale lime as the light, which I think I do, and then I want to backlight it. See, green and purple work really gorgeously together, um, so I need to mix up some dark purples, but I don't want it to be like too vivid. I want this green to be sort of the, the most vivid one. This is a pigment there. And then what we're going to do is we want to keep this all kind of cold because I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give it a pop of warmth. Oh yeah, that's good, okay. So I'm gonna take up some of this. The nice thing about watercolors, you can take it up. And move it around. In Sunset Boulevard, the way that it uh, is very unreal is um, the way it's shot, the cinematography, the way it's lit. Oh, it's lit, it's so beautiful. Her mansion is so magical and so removed from everything else that whenever the young man goes to, he goes to somewhere real, which would be a uh, studio lot in this case, the, her mansion is so unreal that it makes the studio lot seem really grounded, which is a very interesting way to, to create sort of a false reality. Um, I use watercolor because it's very easily transportable. 
some people are extremely talented. They can do everything with just the basic three colors. Mm. But for me, I'm looking for really specific vibes out of colors. Right now what I'm using is a phthalo purple and a phthalo blue. One of the big colors that was discovered in like 1810 was an arsenic green. And it's a super just gorgeous, just beautiful color, but it's arsenic. <laughs> so it's a little deadly, but it was in everybody's clothes. Like it was the most chic color uh, that everybody used. And some examples of it survive right now, but a lot of people died from it because it was so absolutely deadly. So if you can see, this is a purple. Uh, this is the blue, these are both grayed out. Um, this is a gray purple and this is the blue and these are only a little bit um, dulled and this is the blue again but very dulled. This is the same color but it looks completely different just because of what it's next to. Because you can have an idea of how things are going to look together but until they go down on the paper you don't know. And this is one of the things I actually like a lot about this huge palette is, is like I said there's that element of surprise. You don't exactly know how it's gonna go. You have an idea, but the palette may disagree with you. So comics is under such a more compressed deadline than um, than painting. Like in Grumble, uh, we just knew we wanted them to go to a lot of different locations. So what I did was I designed the main character, Talia, to be able to stand out in a lot of different locations, which is why she has the blue-yellow palette. The yellow will pop in blue situations and the blue will pop in yellow situations. Whatever situation she's in, I can always sort of make her pop. And that that was really fundamental. When I designed Hex Wives, um, the goals for that was like, the power was what really needed to be fundamental. So I designed um, the powers first and I had, Mirka had also already sort of done a, um, a little color study of the characters that that's how she wanted them to work. So I worked off of her color studies for the characters. Then I needed a second thing was to design the powers. And then for designing the powers <laughs> after that, I still had to figure out how to do, uh, not disrupt the powers, which had needed to be in a set palette. And the, the architect's powers conflicting with the witch's powers. I also needed to figure out how to show that there was a reality and a false reality. And so I chose to do that through rendering. So the, the tools that Colors has are um, cue, value, rendering. And you have to think about how you're using those and why you're using those when you're trying to make a plan. I am a little bit naughty and I think about, um, I think about color first. You should think about value first, but I like color <laughs> and I like to set the mood first. So I tend to think about color first, which is, which is naughty, but I always, I always keep value in mind when I'm doing color. So what you'll see actually first is that this one's going to be the most mushy because I thought about the values the least on it. And then the next ones will be decreasingly mushy. This is my cheat for painting on airplanes. I have a little dropper bottle so that I don't spill on anyone um, because I'm a klutz. Uh, see, yeah, that's like pretty mushy. Those values are way too similar. So even if I like knock in all of this, it's not gonna get the kind of halo I want. But what it does give us is that we should take another layer in there to get this going. Um, when I'm thinking about rendering for comics, uh, one of the things I think about is what looks good with the art because I am there to support the artist. It's not, it's not my show, it's their show. You need to think about whether or not they, their kind of art um, takes heavy rendering or not. Rendering is how much uh, you are showing how the light bends on an object, okay? So if you think of the, the thing that makes a circle drawing looks like a ball, that's the rendering. Some people like do these beautiful things with inks where if you just do 
flat color and don't add a lot of gradients or highlights or anything like that. It still looks pretty much like a ball or it's graphic cartooning where you don't, you really don't want to do that stuff in graphic cartooning. You want to pay attention to the art first and then like your ego second. Well, okay. Uh, story first, art second, your ego should be like way left at the door. You can see that green pops a little bit more, but I don't quite have the, the vibration there that I want. Um, but what I might do is retain this color and use it a little bit for pops of temperature in this, in this one. I was originally gonna take a very soft brush and pop her real warm on her face to see if that would do what I wanted it to do. But I can tell you right now from how this is lining up that it's not gonna work. But I don't mind. Uh, all brushes have their own role. This soft brush makes soft strokes. Firm brush makes uh, very defined strokes. So soft brushes are good if you wanna lay down like a nice soft color. So this soft brush uh, lets me flood it, uh, which is like fill it with water. Oh no, this is gonna, can you see how the, it's just like dropping tons of water on there and then pushing the pigment around? This will all darken as it dries. This color is settled a little bit and I like this light value, but again, I'm unhappy with the value range here. So we will go in and fix that in one second. Uh, okay, and there we go. So the highlights laid in, and this is just so that I can push my darks darker because I work back and forth. Um, I was trained in oil painting, and in that, you, you can really push and pull. Next is start figuring out some shapes we like. I'm gonna take this a little. And you can see the pigment separating there, which is fine, I don't care. You can see I'm switching brushes again because we're about to get much smaller and I may need to even go smaller than this, but we'll find out, whatever, surprise. Um, okay. All right. And then let's in. That's my color studies, and in some period of time, I will have an actual painting <laughs> with details. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining me on this video. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, keep watching the beat. Uh, if you'd like to talk to me anytime about hag films, uh, hit me up on my Twitter, which is Marissa Draws, one R, two S's at Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions about coloring uh, watercolor, horror movies, westerns. I don't know everything, but uh, I sure love talking. <laughs> Stay tuned to the beat. They're just getting started.